Externally, a flap of skin and cartilage, a gatherer of sound energy. The human ear. Sound waves striking the eardrum are conducted mechanically to and amplified in the middle ear, converted into nerve impulses in the inner ear. Traveling along the auditory nerve, the impulses reach the brain where they are perceived and interpreted as meaningful sound. He would be isolated completely from his environment were it not for the sense receptors located in the head. The normal process of hearing, however, may become impaired. Sensory deafness occurs in the inner ear through age, disease, drugs, or prolonged exposure to loud sound. Lesson number three this morning, the ears. As you saw in the illustration there, the human ear is arranged into two basic categories, the inner ear and the outer ear. The outer ear, in Latin, oris externa, that's the visible portion of the ear. The oracle is what it's called, made of ridged cartilage covered with skin. The inner ear, oris interna, that's the hidden part of the ear of a vertebrate. It consists of many small parts within the bony labyrinth. It's a hollow cavity in the temporal bone of the skull. It converts sound pressure patterns into electrochemical impulses which are passed onto the brain via the auditory nerve. And for thousands of years, people mistakenly believed that the benefits of a healthy ear were only to be experienced in the physical sense until Jesus showed up. Let's pray. Father God, creator of heaven, creator of earth and creator of the hearing ear according to Proverbs chapter 20 help us to hear this morning what the spirit is saying with the ears that you've given us amen well the fact that there are nearly 1400 references in scripture to the activity of hearing with an additional 225 specific references to the ear itself, <laughs> that kind of tells us here that God has a particular interest in this feature of our anatomy. The ability to hear. The ability for our ear to function as it should. God's interested in seeing that that happen. In Mark chapter 4, verse 24, Jesus says, Pay attention to what you hear. And in Luke chapter 11, verse 28, he says, Blessed are those who hear. And these are two of some 1,600 references in Scripture. Why is it that we're blessed if we hear? Because if we don't, we'll miss out on good music and easy conversation and other such things that appeal to the sense of hearing? Why should we pay attention, like Jesus says, to what we hear? Is it because we might miss something stimulating, something fun, something maybe helpful? I'll tell you why it's a blessing, and I'll tell you why Jesus says we ought to listen up. In Romans chapter 10, verse 17, it tells us that a person's salvation is largely contingent upon having healthy ears. Your salvation relies upon your ability to hear. It says faith comes by hearing. Faith comes by hearing. And before we start to panic and say, well, what about deaf people who can't hear at all? The word there that's being used isn't identifying the physical sense of hearing, but rather the spiritual sense of hearing. The hearing referred to here is an inner spiritual hearing that discerns God's voice. 
So God has made it clear to us that hearing isn't only meant to be understood as one of the five physical senses. And you and I, especially as Christians, ought to know better. Human beings make the biggest mistake they could make by thinking that it was limited to the physical sense only. There is a great spiritual reality in our hearing. When God says, He who has ears to hear, let him hear, which if you've read through Scripture, you hear some 16 times. When he makes that statement, he's not so much concerned with our ability to hear the racket that the world is producing, and we can hear that loud and clear, even if we're deaf. The world has a lot to say. The world has a lot of noise to make. But when God says, he who has ears to hear, he's not talking about the noise of the world. He's talking about whether we can discern what he's trying to communicate. And I'll tell you right now that very few people can hear that pitch. Very few people are tuned into that frequency. And the, the teachings of Scripture have a remarkable way of telling who can hear God from those who can't hear God. All it takes to find out who has ears is to share the truth and then pay attention to who's picking up on it. Some can. Many cannot. You remember that when Jesus was here, and you'll pick up on this in the Gospels, he taught in such a way, regularly taught and spoke in such a way that only a fraction of the people who heard him audibly were able to understand what he was actually saying spiritually. They all heard his teaching, but not everybody heard it with ears that were able to discern and incorporate the finer nuances of what he was trying to communicate. I want you to turn with me. Matthew chapter 13. <clears throat> Matthew chapter 13 has been read and heard over and over and over in churches all across the world ever since these words were written by Matthew. It's a parable of the sower. That's what it says at the heading of my Bible. I don't know if yours says something about the parable of the sower, but it's not a parable about a sower at all. It's actually a parable more about soils and soil types than about the sower himself, which kind of goes to show that not everybody has ears to really hear and understand what Jesus is trying to say. But if you look at this with me, in verse 1 it says, On the same day Jesus went out of the house and sat by the sea, and great multitudes were gathered together to him, so that he got into a boat and sat, and the whole multitude stood on the shore. Then he spoke many things to them in parables, saying, Behold, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seed fell by the wayside, and the birds came and devoured them. Some fell on stony places where they didn't have much earth, and they immediately sprang up because they had no depth of earth. But when the sun was up, they were scorched. Because they had no root, they withered away. And some fell among thorns, and the thorns sprang up and choked them. But others fell on good ground and yielded a crop, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. <laughs> he begins by saying, Behold, listen up. And he ends by reemphasizing the same point. Listen. Whoever can understand what I'm saying, understand what I'm saying. He's emphasizing the need to the people that are sitting there listening to him, the need to pay a unique kind of attention to what's being said. This isn't a lesson about agriculture. He's talking to a farming society. These are people who knew how to plant seeds. Nobody there was going, really, if they fall on the wayside, the birds might eat them? Oh! Oh! I don't take notes on that. You know, you got to get the rocks out of the dirt, otherwise you run the risk of losing some crop. Oh, I don't, I don't want to lose any of my crop. 
These aren't dumb people. They're largely undiscerning people. This isn't a cut against their intellect. This is a challenge to their spiritual discernment. He who has ears to hear, let him hear, because those without cannot. The reason they need to have a unique kind of attention here for what's being said is because it's being said in a way that you could hear it and still miss the point. He's speaking to a great multitude. That means, in the Greek, tons of people. (laughs) He's talking to tons of people. Masses, waves of men and women coming here to listen to Jesus. And they all heard it. They heard the parable. But for the most part, it fell on deaf ears. Just because you can hear doesn't mean you aren't deaf. So Jesus speaks this parable to them. Why are some people deaf? Why is it? Well, we know that there may be some sort of damage done to the inner ear. There may be some sort of disease or perhaps old age, right? We all saw the same intro. There are reasons for that, but we're not speaking physically anymore. Why are some people deaf in the spiritual sense? It's because they want to be. They want to be deaf. You ever plug your ears to unsavory noises? Like, you know, an alarm clock. That's what the snooze button is for, right? To shut that thing off immediately. Because there are some things you don't want to hear. Sirens, screaming, you know, nagging. Just plug your ears and get away. Why? Because you don't want to hear what's being verbalized. So some people are deaf because they want to be. In verse 10, the disciples came. They asked him, why do you speak to them in parables? And he answered and he said, because it's been given to you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but it has not been given to them. Because whoever has, and here's why, It's not because God plays favorites. And I'll let you understand, but not you, because, you know, it's like ugly sweater party for you year-round, so I don't like how you dress. So I'm going to bless these people with deep spiritual understanding and keep everybody in the dark. No, Jesus clarifies in verse 12 and says, because whoever has to him more will be given, and he will have abundance of understanding, if I may. They understand, they accept, they embrace the understanding that God has made clear to them, and then he will give them more. But whoever doesn't have, in other words, God's given them some understanding, and they reject it, so they don't have any, even what he has will be taken away from him. So what little understanding they may have had in the beginning, even that will go away. Why? Because you wouldn't accept or embrace the realities that God has already shown you you're essentially plugging your ears to what he's said thus far. Jesus says, that's why I speak to them in parables, verse 13, because seeing, they don't see, and hearing, they don't hear, nor do they understand. That's why some people are deaf, because they want to be. Now, you and I, when we think of the physical sense of deafness, that's undesirable. No, I mean... I I don't know of anybody who's signing up for that one. But as undesirable as you'd think deafness would be, (laughs) some people, at least in the spiritual sense, prefer that. And they manifest their desire for deafness every time they plug their ears to what's been said for so long. The truth that has been being given that Jesus, just like here, essentially goes quiet on them. He keeps teaching, but he does it in a way that it now goes in one ear and out the other. So his parables really start in chapter 13 of Matthew. He's been teaching for 12 chapters now. Jesus has been around for a long time already. This is about two years into his ministry. They've all heard him teach, and he was teaching plainly. 
the sharp cutting realities of the truth of God. And so many of them had been plugging their ears that finally now he starts speaking in code. So much so that his disciples are like, what was that all about? Like they noticed the shift. What are you teaching like that for? Everybody knows how to plant seeds around here. And Jesus is like, because they don't like the way I teach and they reject it all the time. So now they're not going to get anything. And he still plays the same game in the church today. Do you know that? That those who plug their ears to what Jesus has pressed upon them sooner or later will find that he goes quiet. He'll only try for so long before you've made it clear that you don't want the truth. And even though we come and we sit in church and we hear the teachings of Christ, he's no longer active. He's no longer interested in trying to make you do what you have proven to not want. And we grow hard of hearing we become deaf. Hebrews 5.11 makes a reference to becoming dull of hearing. That's what's happening here in Matthew 13. Jesus has been teaching them straightforward for a long time now, these multitudes. But his teaching has gone from challenging them to offending them to outright angering them. If you look at the first 12 chapters, you can see that kind of progression. It challenged them, but they didn't like it. So they rejected it. And then pretty soon, it offended them. Why? Because they didn't like it. But Jesus kept teaching. And pretty soon, it outright angers them and they're plotting his death. Why? Because they didn't like it. And so you see that. When, he, when they were challenged, they questioned him. When they were offended, they accused him. It not, it, he angered them and now they're going to try and figure out a way to kill him. So they've explicitly proven over time that they don't want it. And so Jesus, you could almost say that he's rather polite. He's not going to scream in your ear. You know what I mean? He sees that people plug their ears. He sees that people are, nah, 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 I can't hear you. I can't hear you. Okay. I'll leave you alone. That doesn't mean he's not going to keep teaching just because one or two people don't like it, or even multitudes don't like it. That doesn't mean he ain't going to st still teach. He's just going to do it in a way that goes right over your head. No problem for him. So now Jesus is granting them the deafness that they want. Even though there they are on the shore as Jesus preaches from the boat, they sit there and they listen to him teach. <laughs> They're not hearing a word of it anymore. Uh, they are a hard shell. All, all they get from Jesus now and from this point forward is absolute silence. And I'll tell you that they're pretty okay with that. And they're, they're, they're really okay with that. Be, and I know this because uh, if you notice the parable of the sower, uh, nobody picks up stones to stone him at the end of that one like they did at the end of some of his other teachings. You know, a farmer went out to sow and then the birds ate some of the seed and some of it, you know, but then there was a crop in some of the fields, you know, so... Nobody was offended. There. Nice little sermonette for you. Yeah. Have a good Sunday. He says, he who has ears to hear will understand what I'm saying and act upon that. But the rest of you are dismissed. And so now he's obliging and they're enjoying the silence. Uh, but I'll tell you this. It's worse than they realize. Okay. They've heard a, a pleasant sermonette from Jesus, um, but though it didn't offend them, uh, though it didn't anger them, though it didn't challenge them, it's doing something far worse to them. Not only is Jesus making them unable to hear what he's saying in these parables, he's also causing them to become deaf to everything they've ever heard him say in the past as well. You notice in verse 12 where it says, even those, if they don't have, if they've rejected it, I'm going to take away even everything that they thought they had. And so now, any encouraging thing they've ever heard from Jesus, any promise that was ever given, any helpful thing they've ever gleaned from his teaching, that now, even the stuff of the past that maybe they somewhat enjoyed and it was worth writing down in their little notebooks, even that now is being soured by their spiritual condition so that not only everything Jesus says, every word that comes out of his mouth now 
is offensive. Everything he's ever done and said in the past is rejected also, and it's lost forever. So nothing he's ever said to them in the first 13 chapters is ever going to make a difference in their life or their eternal destiny. So what does that have to do with us in the church 2021 is the fact that there can come a point. We need to understand that there can come a point where your sin puts you at such odds against Jesus that you don't even want to know what he says or ever said anymore. Your sin puts you at such odds, it's over. So that you get to a point where you want to misinterpret the truth. You actively seek to misconstrue what's being said. You want to not get it. And you try to be deaf. Do you know that hearing hurts some people like no deafness ever could? Hearing the truth hurts some people more than deafness ever will. So they opt to go deaf. And Jesus accommodates people with those desires. So, why are some people deaf? Partly because they want to be deaf and partly because Jesus gives them what they want. That's why some people are deaf. It's a cooperative effort. But I want to turn that coin over and ask the question, what gives an ear the ability to hear? We know why some people are deaf, but how come some people can hear in the spiritual sense? Well, I'll tell you that what makes a person or an ear hear anything at all isn't the outer ear. This thing, you can bend it and fold it and it doesn't really, all it does is messes up your microphone. <laughs> but you can bend it, you can fold it and it doesn't really do anything. So it's not the outer ear. True hearing takes place far beyond anyone's perception, deep inside a person's head where you can't see it. You can't see it. The messages we receive audibly need to get all the way in or they will do no good. They need to get all the way into your head where they can be processed and converted into meaningful information. So, ladies and gentlemen, it all comes down to whether the inner ear is properly functioning. If it isn't, it doesn't matter how loud anybody screams or how loud the sirens ever are. In fact, if there are problems with the inner ear, the outer ear is worthless. Worthless. No matter how much you try to accessorize it. That's what we do with the outer ear. We hang up silver, from it and gold and pearls and hoops and all kinds of things. But hanging decorations from a deaf ear can't make it hear. And how many people are guilty of doing that in the spiritual sense? They can't hear. They don't want to hear. They prefer deafness to the truth rather than the embracing of it. Yet, they decorate their lives with all kinds of pious activity and all kinds of church commitments and all kinds of moral behaviors when in the end, they're still as deaf as ever. Hanging decorations from a deaf ear cannot make it hear. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. So, what does give in ear the ability to hear. How come some people can, in the spiritual sense, hear? I want you to notice in verses 18 through 23, Jesus explains the meaning behind the parable. And I'm not going to read all of that, but I'll tell you the same account in Luke chapter 8 tells us that it was because his disciples had asked him to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then after that, in verses 24 through 30, you'll notice that Jesus immediately goes into another parable. 
And after that, in verses 31 and 32, he immediately goes into another parable. And then, after that, in verse 33, Jesus gives another parable. And then, after that, look at verse 36, he finally explains the meaning behind the parable. Why? Again, because his disciples asked. Okay. Why can some people hear? In the spiritual sense, it's because they want to hear. They ask to hear. They want the truth. They're pressing into the truth. If they don't understand it, they're going to get it from Jesus and only Jesus because they want it so badly. They will not stop until they have understanding. People who want to hear can. In the spiritual sense, anyone who wants ears to hear can get a pair from God. If you want to understand, he'll give you understanding. Doesn't James write about that? If any of you lacks, just ask. God will give liberally to anybody without partiality. People are deaf because they want to be deaf. People can hear because they want to hear. They aren't put off by what they have heard from Jesus Christ and they want to know more. That's why they can hear and the multitudes can't. You notice the multitudes didn't even stick around. Jesus sent them all home and they were glad to go. After some meaningless agricultural lesson that really didn't benefit them at all beyond what they already knew, but they didn't stick around for answers. They didn't want to know what that was all about. They didn't care. Church was over. I'm out. Can't wait to get out of here. I don't want anything deeper than what I get from a sermonette. I don't want real Christian living. Uh, dismiss me as soon as I can be, Lord Jesus. And then they all go home. Why? Because well, they'd heard enough for the day. You know what's funny? They'd heard enough and they hadn't heard anything. They hadn't heard anything. And yet that was enough for them. It's the true sheep that want to make sense of what's being said so that they can do something with what was said. Jesus said in John 10, 27, My sheep hear my voice and they follow me. I try to send them home, they won't go. <laughs> they go where I go. They stay where I stay, I jump, they hear. Goats don't. Jesus said, my sheep hear my voice. Goats don't. Everybody wants to hear what Jesus has to say, don't they? Sunday morning comes along and people from coast to coast pour into churches and we subscribe to podcasts and we scour online sources for every little tidbit of supposed truth out there and we want to know Jesus' take on it. Everybody wants to hear Jesus, but very few of them want to know what he actually means by what he said. And that's the truth. So the same teaching that left the multitudes, the multitudes, the tens of thousands of people that ever heard Jesus' one little message there, of all of them, the same teaching that left them unaffected is finding its mark in a select few, these disciples namely, all because they had a genuine desire to understand. And so Jesus clarifies for his disciples what had left so many others wondering. Now here's where it gets interesting is because uh, do you think that there were no conversations on the way home for those in the multitudes? Do you think that when they got home they just kind of forgot it all? No, they probably talked about it, but they interpreted the message however they wanted because the real interpreter was left behind long ago at the sea. So now it 
Now it enters into the realm of opinion and interpretation when really Jesus is there going, I, I can explain what I meant if you care to understand, but because they don't want to understand, because they're intentionally deaf, they're going to rely on their own explanations of what that might have meant and what do you think and here's what it means and probably a couple of them rose up and went it's is what it means you know for sure and and then they they got their own little followers and their own little spinoffs and their own little denominations and their own little home churches barf (laughs) right so much of what poses as christianity in our country is nothing more than a bunch of deaf people all in their own little community trying to figure out sign language and make sense of some spiritual stuff that Jesus said once upon a time. They misconstrue it and they twist it and they bend it over backwards and they do all kinds of stuff with it, repackage it, and then write books. It's the blind leading the blind, or in this case, the deaf leading the deaf. We'll get to eyesight next week. So Jesus is going to explain himself to anyone who cares to stick around and listen. He does it for his disciples in Matthew 13. And not only does he explain the one parable, but you notice he privately gives them three additional parables. Privately. These weren't for the multitudes. They got insights that day that nobody else would have gotten had Matthew not written Matthew. Matthew is the only one that wrote about the pearl of great price, if I'm not mistaken, and the great treasure and the dragnet. Thank you, Matthew, for sharing that with the world. But Jesus gives great insight to those who want it. Right? Now what he says in verse 12, whoever has more will be given. He's fulfilling that for Matthew and the boys here. Now it's fitting that two of those additional parables that Jesus gave privately are actually about Get this, here's the synopsis. A man realizing something that no one else does and recognizing the value of it gives up everything else he has just to keep it. That's the synopsis of two of the three remaining parables there. A man realizing something that no one else does and recognizing the value of it gives up everything he has in life just to keep that thing in the context of having ears to hear? What kind of value you would you put on that? And what would you give up to have ears that hear? Because when Jesus says something you don't like and you're not willing to give up what he's asking you to give up, it's obvious you don't put very high a value on hearing ears because God will take them right back. You don't want hearing ears? Fine. Fine. Trash them. Go deaf. All you got to do is at any point along the way go, I don't like what you're telling me to do, Jesus. I'm not going to do it. I like my life as it is. I don't want the life you offer. Thanks, though. So not only do they seek to understand the meaning behind what Jesus is saying here, he was glad to explain it to his disciples. And beyond that, give them even more insight than they were even looking for. Why is it that some people can hear? Ah, Partly because they want to hear and partly because God gives them what they want. Whether you can hear or you're deaf, God's going to give you what you want. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. Let me offer this to you. He who wants ears to hear, prove it. Prove it. When Jesus came from heaven to earth 2,000 years ago, he came for many reasons, some of them more significant than others. He came to die for the human race, did he not? To save us from our sins. His blood paid for all of us, though not everyone will take him up on that offer. But he came for various reasons. One of them, in part, to combat deafness. 
to meet it head on. He came to give sight to the blind, to heal the lame, to unplug the ears of the deaf. Right? We see him doing that in one specific instance. Beautiful scene. Deaf man, mute, comes up to Jesus and Jesus, <laughs> he spits on the man's tongue, plugs his ears with his fingers and says, be opened. He looks up to heaven and he sighs. Be opened. And the man can hear. That's why Jesus came. And he demonstrates that reality for us in the physical sense so that his boys could write it down in the Gospels for us to read about. But how often is he willing to do that for us in the spiritual sense? You've been plugging your ears to him. You don't like what he has to say. He sounds like a siren, like a screamer, like an annoyance, and you have been just... Mm. He came so that you wouldn't do that anymore that you could look at him in a different light and see how wonderful he is and how soothing his voice can be and how comforting his words actually are. But if you love sin, you'll, you'll find that he is never anything more than just, yeah, you seen Dumb and Dumber? You want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Right? That's Jesus to some people. Do you understand that? Just this constant, deafening noise in their life, trying to get them here to trying to get them to hear things that they are working so hard to not notice. He came to combat deafness. That's why he came to this earth and that's why he involves himself in your life. To combat the deafness that we were all born with and are predisposed to. No one is born with hearing ears, not in the spiritual sense. Do you understand that? You must be given them. And if you haven't, I'm sorry you're still deaf. We all start that way. Isaiah 35, 5 says that Jesus came to unplug the ears of the deaf. And God doesn't want to scream at you. The Lord doesn't want to sound like that to you. He doesn't want you to receive his instruction as if it were a verbal irritant. He wants to speak to you, right, in a still, small voice. A still, small voice. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 21 says, Your own ears will learn to hear God. Right behind you, a voice will say, This is the way you should go. Whether to the right or to the left, that's the way it should work. A voice behind you saying, Turn here. Okay, turn now left. Okay, now put the pornography away. Okay, now stop drinking to drunkenness. Stop going to that place. Stop treating them the way you do. Start loving my people like you should. Stop this. Start this. When we're ready to hear, he's ready to give hearing ears. That's the way it should work, but for so many it doesn't. They think they can hear because they're within earshot of the teachings of Jesus. But they don't realize that there's more to saving faith than just listening to accurate Bible teaching. If the truth isn't getting all the way into your life and moving your soul to the point that it starts to have a very great and noticeable secondary effect, then you're deaf. Still deaf. Even more than that, if you're paying any attention, you'll see how unsteady your life is. 
It's not just that you can't hear, it's that you won't hear. And it's not just that you won't hear, it's that everything else is becoming very, shall we say, cattywampus. You're all over the map. You're starting to get tipsy. Did you know that damage to your inner ear not only impairs your hearing, but it affects your equilibrium as well? Your ear is responsible not only for hearing, but also for balance. We forget that, don't we? We think that we can plug our ears to what Jesus has oh so clearly told us and still maintain a steady eddy life. Ah! Wrong! Uh-uh! And you go, no, well, but... And, and, and you're still fairly steady, Eddie. But you're going to plug your ears to him again. And now you're starting to swagger. You're tipsy. And you're still plugging your ears. And pretty soon, it's only a matter of time, you're going to fall flat. You may get up, but the whole room will be spinning such that you'll fall over and over and over again. That'll be your life. That'll be it. And even if you manage to eke out a fairly straight line through life, wait till you see what comes next. <laughs> Talk about falling down. Well, hey, not listening to Jesus isn't going to make him stop talking. He just keeps increasing the volume. And he will do so until you finally blow a spiritual eardrum and can't hear anything anymore. Right? The teachings of Jesus, according to Isaiah, can not only unplug the ears of the deaf, but it can also deafen those who keep plugging their ears. Either way, Jesus keeps speaking. Can you hear him this morning? Can you hear him? I know you hear me. I don't think I've got anybody deaf in the congregation. Okay? So you're all hearing me. Thanks. Nice of you. But are you hearing him? Listen, not just today, but particularly yesterday. Last week. Last year. Because if you weren't listening to him then, don't tell me you hear him today. It's deliberate deafness. An article from Table Talk magazine says this, quote, every time God's word is proclaimed, it changes all those within its hearing. No one ever remains unaffected by God's word. To those who hear it positively, there is growth in grace to those who reject it or are indifferent to it, calluses are added to their souls and calcium to their hearts. The eye becomes dimmer and dimmer, the ear heavier and heavier, and the mystery of the kingdom more and more obscure. He who has ears to hear, let him hear. End quote. Father, we look to you this morning. Hopefully, best case scenario with open ears. If we have been yesterday, last week, last year, plugging our ears to you, may that end fast that we may be the recipients of the promise Isaiah made that you would unplug, that you could unplug the ears of the deaf. Maybe it isn't hearing damage at all. Maybe it isn't disease. Maybe it isn't old age. Maybe it's self-inflicted. And really, our ears aren't full of wax. It's our fingers stuck in there. We simply need to stop ignoring you. Stop pretending you're not speaking. Stop thinking that we can get away with
cupping our hands over our ears as if you have nothing to say because you do. Oh, you always do. You are a very wordy fellow. Always have been. Always will be. May we listen when you speak. May our ears hear what you say. We know that we will be blessed for it. 